computers are everywhere. One of the things we know about computers is that as soon as you buy one, it's obsolete. Inside every computer are hundreds of millions of transistors. If I had been saying this 20 years ago, probably I would have said that there were hundreds of thousands. The fact that the number of transistors keeps increasing uh, in an exponential fashion, that is basically doubling every one and a half years, is something that was first noticed by Gordon Moore, the founder of Intel. A very similar type of aggressive scaling for memory density as has taken place as well in magnetic hard drive storage. Uh, and yet, both of these technologies are quite mature. That is, uh, we think that probably within the next 10 years or so, uh, one or more, both of those technologies, uh, magnetic storage uh, and uh, silicon-based transistors, are going to reach fundamental limits. The question is, what happens after that? What is going to replace these technologies? We've been working on a system of uh, oxides which have properties very similar to semiconductors and storage materials. The system that we've been looking at contains two different types of oxides. One is lanthanum aluminate, a very thin layer, only 1.2 nanometers, just a few atomic layers, grown on top of another oxide, strontium titanate. It turns out that the interface of the region that uh, separates those two materials can either be a conductor or an insulator, and it can be switched back and forth using an electric field. But we've discovered a way of controlling this transition, making it metal, or a insulator on a scale that has never been seen before. The mechanism is very similar to that of a very popular children's toy. The idea is that you take a very sharp probe and you move it across the top of that material and when you do so you can switch the material between the metallic state and the insulating state. Here we're scraping off aluminum off of the plate of glass and it's reversible so we can shake it and it goes away. Yes. The same thing is actually true for the system that we're looking at. We can write structures that are uh, much smaller than what you see here. This is on the order of maybe a millimeter. What we can draw is on the order of a nanometer. So that's actually a trillion times smaller area than what you can make with this children's toy. We have made very high density memory. We can simply put dots where we want a one to be and the absence of a dot to be a zero. We can do this with a very high density and we can also make transistors. And that's what we demonstrated recently. We were able to create a transistor whose characteristic size is only two nanometers. That's just five lattice spacings for the atomic, at the atomic scale. That's basically approaching the atomic scale. The current silicon technology right now works at what is called the 45 nanometer node. So the the Penryn processors that are made by Intel, for example, they have a typical half width of 45 nanometers. And we are working with structures that have a size of about 2 nanometers. The area is about 1,000th of that of the current technologies. Furthermore, those structures are built in a humongous facility that takes up 17 football fields. Whereas, in principle, what we're doing can be scaled down to the size of the object in which that system that we create, transistors, would reside. So, in fact, you might imagine putting a, all the capabilities required to create these structures within the object itself, something on the, on the size of an iPod Nano itself. Mm -hmm.